Good morning. So, as many of you are well aware of, school is starting soon. Unless you are lucky enough to have passed through the labyrinth of the education system. But that's not me. I'm still stuck in the trenches of school. But let's not complain about that. Instead, what can I do to improve school for myself? Near the end of the last spring semester, our school decided to replace all of our beautiful classic TI-84 pluses with the new, absolutely horrible TI Inspire 2. Don't even get me started about these calculators. They are horrible. I don't have one right now to show you how bad they are, but just let me say, this is a trackpad. You shouldn't control a calculator with a trackpad. Anyways, long story short, I got my hands on one of the old calculators that they were throwing away. And let me say, she's a beaut. The fine lines of sleek, elegant design, the true speed you can acquire on its tactile keyboard, and its impressive graphing potential. Oh, also you can game on it. So recently, I found this calculator again in one of my drawers and had a genius idea. Let's make a game for it. This sounded like a really fun idea, but one problem. I had no clue how I was even going to do this. All I have is a lot of Unity experience and that one time I tried to make a game in Python. But I still thought this was a good idea, so I got started. First up, I had to figure out how to get games on the calculator in the first place. I found some software that I could transfer files to and from the calculator. Next, I found this awesome website that had a whole ton of games and resources for all of the TI calculators, and it was so amazing to find this whole community sharing and helping out. From there, I downloaded some pretty epic games. I found a classic port of Tetris, which was great. I found this truly awesome car game called Mega Car, which was crazy how good it was. And last but not least, I ended on Doom, obviously, such a classic in the gaming space. These games got me so hyped up for what I could create on these simple looking calculators. So I had played through these games, but I was still no closer to actually making a game of my own. I had to figure out how to write and run the code on the calculator, so I went about finding how to do this. I stumbled upon this really awesome set of tutorials for the calculator. This brought me through learning TI Basic, the language that I would be making games through. First up I needed a way to edit the code. The program that I was using to get files to and from the calculator, TI Connect CE, was going to work fine so that was already done. The tutorial that I was following was super helpful and really started teaching the vital basics. But one thing I realized quick was that I didn't want to have to send the files to my calculator every time to test them. So let's find an emulator instead. I was looking at a bunch of emulators, but guess what? None of them support Mac, just like literally everything else. I knew you guys don't really care because only like 5% of you guys actually watch on Mac, but my fellow Mac users, you understand my pain. But to cut it down, I didn't find any emulators that would run on my computer, except for one, Justified, or I don't know how you say that, that ran in my browser. It wasn't exactly what I was looking for, but it worked. Anyways, let's get to writing some code. So I went through the tutorial, and let me say, it was so well written. It slowly started to pound the knowledge into my thick skull. TI Basic was pretty cool and really functional. You could do a ton more on these calculators than I initially thought. I had a ton of fun learning, and I can't stress how good this tutorial was. I had us code up a couple simple projects that showcased a couple of main features that I'd have to use later. It took me longer than I thought to get the hang of it. One of the things that finally clicked in my brain was I had to stop thinking of it as a computer and realize I was programming for a calculator. This might seem crazy, but it's really what I had to start thinking about. Instead of each slide of code being a command, each slide of code was an equation, and that's how I had to think about it. I finished with the tutorial, and I was ready to start on my own game. So let's get started. I need to come up with an idea. I need it to be simple for two reasons. Number one, because I'm a crappy programmer in a language that I don't know like at all. And number two, it's a calculator. I'm not going to make the next 
Red Dead Redemption on it, its screen can literally only display two colors, on and off. Well, let's find an idea. So there's this simple mobile game called A Maze. You're a ball and you have to move around a maze, covering the whole ground in paint, while only being able to move in straight lines. It's a pretty simple concept, and I thought it would be a really fun idea to make. So let's get started with it. This is a pretty simple idea, it just needs a couple of core features. Number one, I need a map. Number two, I need the player to collide with the walls. And number three, I need to change the ground under where the player moves. Okay, this seems doable. First up was the map. The way that I was gonna do this is I had the whole map stored in a matrix. Like those horrible things you learned in math class but still don't know the actual use for. But anyways, each row and column of the matrix would correlate to a row and column of the screen. And boom, map generation. Next up was the player movement. This was again, pretty easy. It just checked the values on the matrix and only moved into a new space if it was empty. Boom, easy peasy. Time to move on to the next step. So now time to paint the ground underneath the player. This was actually, surprise surprise, again, super easy. Every time the player moved, it would change where he was to the painted sprite and update the matrix accordingly. Once it checked that all the spaces in the matrix were filled, you would beat the level and it would kick you out into a new level. Boom, fantastic. Okay, so now that the main structure of the game was made, I needed to start designing levels for the game. But I didn't want to just type out these matrixes by hand, so instead I got a Google Sheet and filled them out from there. Then I had to go back to the code editor and set it up in a matrix. Ooh, that was a long process. Time to do that seven more times. Yay. Okay, finally I have that all in the game. With a few tweaks and optimizations, it was all done. I'd made a complete game for the TI-84 Plus. The game was done, but that only took me like a day. So let's make another one. Why not make another easy game? How about a maze game? This way I could use a lot of the movement code and just make a whole new experience. Let's get going. Okay, like I said, the map generation was pretty much exactly the same. So already that one's out of the way with. Next, the player was pretty much the same except you could move more freely instead of just moving in straight lines. Nice. We got rid of the player painting the ground beneath and updating the matrix. You would just win when you hit the end point and the game loop is done. Time for my favorite part, making levels for way too long. Boom, second game done. Okay, so now I have two games down, but two is kind of a dumb number. So let's make a third. Woo, let's go. Okay, so for this third idea, I remembered a simple game that I used to play on Cool Math all the time, B Cubed. This was a simple puzzle game where you had to get to the end with stepping on each block once and only once, not more, not less. It's a pretty fun game, and I thought it would be pretty fun to try and make on this calculator. Okay, again, I got to reuse the map generation system, but I just get to flip the visuals, so you can only walk on the blocks, and the open spaces you can't walk on. With this in, I got to steal some of the code from the Amaze game and erase the blocks that you have already walked on. And finally, I just had to check when you are in the winning spot, the whole level, to see if there were any blocks left. And if there weren't, you won. But guess what time it is. Time to grind out making more levels. Oh, so much fun. And boom, third and final game is done. All the games are finished up. I know that they're really simple, but they were fun to make and a good starter project. If you want to get any of them for yourself to play on your very own calculator, then I'll have the link to the itch page for them down below. Overall, this was actually a ton of fun for me to do. It's still kind of crazy to know that I made a game on this piece of hardware, but I guess I did. 
I can hold the physical calculator in my hand and know that I wrote a piece of software for this. It was super fun to learn this language. Testing the code was slightly frustrating because I would have to upload it to the emulator every time and it was a little bit tedious. But I got there in the end. For these games, I only use the main text screen of the calculator, but there's a whole graphic mode that I haven't even touched, and it looks like it has an absolute ton of potential. So maybe I'll try and make in a game for that sometimes later. Let me know what you want to see from my next project. Thanks to all of you watching this long. Leave a comment if you have any ideas or suggestions. I read and respond to literally every single one. If you like this video, then like and prescribe. If you didn't, don't. Or whatever, I'm not your mom. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, you, specifically you. I'll see you next time.